Um, we're in the home stretch here in terms of uh, wrapping up the open session. Uh, next in line is a council initiated discussion. I'll just point out we have a couple of announcements to make. I have to go over the MOU, the Memorandum, Memorandum of Understanding, and then read the chant of the conflict of interest document to you. So um, bear in mind, we have a few other things left to do. The council initiated discussion will be led by Eric. It's generally when we ask of the council, what are the items that you're thinking about? We've, we've been driving this agenda so far. What are the items that are uh, hot in your mind? Uh, we sometimes ask the council if they want to hear reports from us at May or September or subsequent council rounds. So, is open. And either topics you want to talk about now or you want to plant seeds of things that we didn't cover at this open session you'd like to hear about at future council meetings. I'll, I'll just yeah, say as, as a new member that I'm very impressed with the spectrum and the br breadth of the kinds of applications that you are looking for and you are funding. I mean, you, you really are covering the gamut of the, the, the reorganization pieces that you uh, described, and I, I, I just find it very impressive. At the risk of sounding like, what do you call it? A, uh, a plant or, <laughs> or, or a, sick, a sycophant or something? I'm not sure what it is. Happy camper, Bob. Happy camper. <laughs> Comments, questions, requests, thoughts? You can also sleep on it and yeah. give us something tomorrow morning if you'd rather. Do you want to say, if, if we're, or, I mean, one thing Rudy anticipated, May Council going to be a particularly busy one or not as busy? I mean, partially it, it, it helps to frame how many things we can squeeze into a council meeting. Um, I forgot what we May looks like. We have maybe four RFAs coming, okay. so there'll be more to do. But it, it really is very helpful for us to hear from you of things you want updates about because especially months in advance, it gives us time to prepare for it and think it through. So yeah, Howard. Uh, this might be heresy, but it seems like the, the list of I felt seems like the the list of uh, approved clearances is uh, greater than can ever be actually put out there to be funded. Uh, so so things we've cleared in in the past is there's too many of them. Um, is there like, does pr program handle that or does uh, something that comes back to us to d uh, to unclear some? Uh, well, first of all, but but give us a little more detail. What do you mean by well, that? If you look at the. Uh, um, there's documents that we've looked at yes. um, before that, that looked at the past uh, council meetings and uh, concepts that have been cleared, and it's, but yet are, are not yet RFAs uh, um, out on the on the street, and it seems like there are more cleared concepts than can hope to be funded in the current environment, and I just unclear how I used the word clear too many times, but how, how does one deal with that? Like, how, what is our responsibility to help you? have fewer of those on the books. Well, let me try to take a first pass at that, and I'm, I'm eyeing Terry and Jeff, who are the program division directors of, that we, they're sort of often in these conversations about these priorities, in their, especially their new roles as division directors. First thing, let me remind you that um, this council's advice previously, when there were um, you know healthy uh, discussions around things that we should or should not be doing, um, came to the conclusion that it probably was better to err on the side of approving some concepts as long as we wouldn't be um, angry with council with, at, at the other end of it when they actually saw what came, if there was debate around whether the time was right for something or not, as long as we were comfortable getting the feedback by the time you actually looked at the grants to say, you know what, you originally penciled in $3 million of stuff for this RFA, but we only think there's $2 million worth funding it. And so our, dis our collective decision was to err on the side of, of having you approve it, having us go for it, uh, and giving you the ability to make recommendations to us that we're pruning at the end. So by definition, that might mean that we will let more out theoretically out of the gates than we actually could fund. I think the second thing playing into your question may also reflect some of our, um, our budget projections, which have because of the current circumstance we find ourselves in are, are extremely conservative. 
So while you think that all these things can't be funded, those are based on, you know, big assumptions based on possibilities that may or may not come to pass. And if they don't come to pass, actually, we will be very comfortable. But it's all based on assumptions not only for this year, but for next year. So I, I don't think it's as bad as you think it might be. Um, but but it, there will be some challenges. I mean, it's not there won't be challenges. Well, I wasn't necessarily thinking there was how uh, I wasn't trying to quantitate badness, but but rather uh, just wasn't sure about, about the process. I think we would all be delighted to not have to uh, declear or whatever the right, right word is um, concept. So, um, but just wasn't sure what goals. No, we don't see you having to declare anything, but but we do see the and again, and I think there's going to be some things that'll be coming up that you'll where we will want your feedback um, about the set of grants that come in on RFA, and just because we've penciled in X number of dollars, if you don't think there's X number of dollars worth of good stuff to fund. We will want to hear that from you because we all decided collectively it was better to do that than to be too conservative up front. Terry and Jeff, do you want to add anything to that? You can I, got it. Okay. I'll add one thing because I think last last year there was a case where there had been an approved concept clearance, but the RFA had never been issued. So it's it's the opposite of the problem you're suggesting, where um, we're not sure how good the things are that'll come in, but we'll take a look. In that case. There was interest in a concept clearance, but there, there was a decision made at, uh, at the program level or internally that um, we don't have the funds to request proposals in that area. And I think that it would be useful uh, to hear if there's uh, any things in that situation right now where it's come up by council, council's been enthusiastic, but program feels like uh, there's not funds to support, support uh, uh, an actual RFA. And so I'm just going to say we're, we are working out the processes to do this internally. Uh, we were really making it up as we were going a year and a half ago. That was the first time we went through that kind of exercise. I, I, I think we have the process improved a little bit now. Uh, and and it's, that's among the information that we plan to bring to you every council round. Are, are there any things like that right now? Approved clearances that have not made it to RFA? Well, there's one example that I think you're thinking of. And but that just meant we didn't have money last fiscal year. But that, uh, but it's, but it's back, uh, but it's on the list and it's in draft and it's going to go out and it's on the uh, on the list potentially for next year. And I, and I think that that example was one of the reasons that in discussions with you, uh, the decision was made to delay the final decision until you really see what the so, so the decision at that point we were more working under the lines of if we clear something for $5 million, we're basically got to keep $5 million on the books instead of being willing to put more on the books and then make the decision at the time of the applications. Okay. Other questions, comments, thoughts, requests? Okay. Seeing none. Okay, so back to the agenda under announcements and item of interest. There are two reports that were sent to NHGRI. They're available on our website um, uh, for the Council open session. First is from the American College of Medical Genetics and Genomics. It's their report to the Council. There are several items of interest. Uh, I'll draw your attention to their position statement on public disclosure of clinically relevant genome variants. And the second is the quarterly report from the National Society of Genetic Counselors. So it's time to go through the memorandum of understanding. And Monica, you want to come up and have a seat on the side? She, she sit here? No, she can be on. The, she, you can be at that chair in case you need to use the microphone. So the mem memorandum of understanding uh, for those new members of the council. In the simplest terms, and I probably do a disservice to what the document really represents, but it's basically a description of how we're going to conduct business with you. Um, what things we are required to report to you, what actions we can take with your uh, consent and without your consent or your, or your knowledge. It's all spelled out in the MOU. I'm not going to sit here and read it to you. There are two changes that have been made to the MOU, and those I will draw to your attention. Um, again, I don't think you'll be surprised by these because you've already seen an example of the first. Uh, the first change is the requirement to conduct special counsel review 
of any application where the principal investigator, if he or she receives that award, would then have more than $1 million a year in direct costs from any number of, of uh, active uh, current grants. Um, so that's been added to the, to the MOU that we, we are now obligated to bring those to council and to have that review be conducted. Um, the second issue is uh, the matter of the expedi expedited council concurrence. Um, this is an NIH-wide, or ECC we're now calling it. This is an NIH-wide uh, phenomenon. It allows the institute to bring certain uh, application types to a subset of the, of the council, members of the council. In the case of NHGRI, it's SBIR and STTR applications. Um, the current members of the uh, ECC committee, I guess we'll informally call them that, are uh, Didi and Jim. And we will conscript someone from the new incoming class, so there'll be three council members. So we will um, bring these applications to this uh, subcommittee about one month before each council meeting, and um, they essentially perform the same process that's done in, in a full and open council meeting. We give a report to you. There is a report uh, in the ECB that shows you the list of applications. Fundamentally, what ECC does is it allows us, if we want to, uh, make an accelerated award, we can basically get started early on those applications. Okay? Any questions about the ECC process or any other aspect of the MOU? Great. All right. I think we're down then to the conflict of interest statement, which I am obligated to read to you. There is a document in your did you get folders or just the pot? Yes, okay. There is a conflict of interest document in your folder. Um, you might want to do it at this time or as we break uh, between the open and closed se session. Please sign it. Comfort will come around and, and collect it from you. This will certify that in the review of applications conducted by the National Advisory Council for the Human Genome Research on February 11, 12, 2013, I absented myself and did not participate in the discussion of nor vote on any application in which I, or to my knowledge, my spouse, minor child, or close professional associate has a financial interest, nor on any application from an organization or institution where I am an employee, consultant, officer, director, or trustee, or am negotiating for employment or otherwise have a financial interest. In council actions in which we voted on a block of applications without discussing any individual one, the so-called unblock vote being an example, my vote did not apply to any application from any institution fulfilling the criteria in the preceding paragraph, or that which I just read to you. So at this point, I think we're ready to close the open session of council, and uh, we'll turn off the cameras. You can run to the bathroom for five or ten minutes, and then let's readjourn to deal with uh, a couple of applications before we quit for the day, okay? <laughs> <laughs>